So the title of my sermonette today is Sandcastles and God's Church. And I'm sure you all woke up this morning thinking, I, I hope someone speaks about sandcastles today, services. But I actually had um, some unusual inspiration for this, and I'm not really sure where it came from. But I love the beach. I love the sand. So there must be something there. I think I might have had a dream about our time at the beach. But anyway, speaking of sandcastles, the world record for a sandcastle in terms of its size, its height, is 69 feet tall. That's pretty impressive. I mean, think about your own experience trying to mess around in the sand when you're at the beach, and how far did you get? Maybe you built close to the shore, and that those waves were always, yeah, maybe threatening as the tide was rolling in, and maybe you didn't get that far. Maybe you didn't get more than a foot or two, but the this, uh, this one was... Um, the 69 foot tall one was constructed in in 2021 and it was built in Denmark and it surpassed the previous German record by about 10 feet. So people have been shooting for this over the years. They've been really spending quite a time. The winning or the current record holder, it required about 5,000 tons of sand and it's worth looking up um, on YouTube or the internet in some way and just looking at at the detail that went into it. It's pretty, it's pretty substantial and pretty impressive. Uh, if you do, you'll notice that it has a very solid base. And so that must have been the, the objective that the person or persons who set out to build this sandcastle started with. They, they recognized that they had a really solid sound base that they may be able to start going up and achieve some height and some detail. So that in it, in itself, that base is substantial and impressive enough. And then the rest of the structure is very pyramid-like in terms of its shape and as it shoots up. It's but it's still it's not a basic flat surface. It has um, carvings. It has turrets that are built out from the 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 face itself. It has uh, sea creatures and parapets and. Um, all of this sculpted into the face, the various faces around the side. And so it's really quite impressive and, and uh, quite a feat. And I don't know how long it lasted, though. That would be something else to read about. But most of us, as I said earlier, that attempt our own structures like this uh, rarely achieve anything remotely <laughs> close to that. Uh, and usually we give up, we have our, a little bit of fun, and then we jump in the water and and the tide comes in and undoes what we had done. But that's just the way it is. Everything is finite. So how do you build a castle like this, a sand castle like this? How is it done? Well, obviously with sand, water, and air, because you need the air to dry a little bit of this, and then the sun to bake what you've done. And so you can bake that hardness in and hopefully achieve some integrity there. So why does some succeed and some, like me, fail spectacularly when we do, uh, attempt to do this. We know that if the sand, and you've experienced this if you've tried, if the sand is too wet, it flows too readily. And if it's too dry, same thing. It flows very much like a liquid in each case. So there is a unique blend that you're shooting for of sand and water to achieve that good mixture, that concrete-like substance, that near perfect combination of sand and water that facilitates a structure with integrity. And just in case you really want to know, apparently river sand is more amenable to building an enduring castle. Uh, and the reason is the shape of the grain. At the beach, so when we've been at the feast in California and we have our day at the beach, the sand that we're experiencing that you like to walk in and feel between your toes has been pounded by surf for generations, and it's very round and it's very smooth. And it tends not to be ideal at sticking together. River sand is very spiky, and it grabs out and pulls in with um, its colleague grain of sand, and it holds together well. And so that's, that, that's kind of the key. But at the base of it all, is, it comes down to something called surface tension. 
And that's the same dynamic that keeps an, old, or an overfilled glass of water uh, remaining in the glass, but forming that beautiful even dome above the rim, which is always fun to look at. If you've gotten that just above, it's very cool. It's the surface tension of each water molecule that's holding it into the glass, even though it's you know, unusually above the rim of the glass. It's the same thing that we're seeing here with the, with the sand, that they're clinging together, spiky grains are grabbing each other, and there's water between each of the grains holding it together and creating structure and integrity. So what does that have to do with God's church, you may ask? God's church is very similar when you think about it in that we require a solid base, and this is, of course, the Creator, our God, along with Jesus Christ. God wants those he calls to form the sandcastle, the church. That's our goal. We're limited in numbers in terms of those that God calls, but we're mighty with our base, our Father, our Creator, our God. Let's turn to Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Ephesians 6 and verse 10, and we're going to read together these words from Scripture. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So God wishes for his people to understand that this world may be fleeting. It is fleeting. But his castle, his kingdom endures. And we can live with him for eternity and with Jesus Christ if we use that power that structure, that base, that power to remain strong as the scripture commands us to do. So that's something that is so similar as we're trying to build this church together and with the guidance of our God, our Lord. So consider Psalm 133 and in verse 1. Psalm 133 and in verse 1. And we'll consider these words. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So here, too, we hearken back to that old sandcastle with the, mouth, with the grains clinging together, living together, if you will, in unity to build that structure. And here, too, we see that God wishes for his people to be together in reality, in the world in which we live, we work, we go to school, we raise families, we're pretty scattered. We know that our church, our group, is scattered around the world. And even those of us in Colorado are not with each other every single day. But as his church, we are more alike than we are separate. And I'm speaking of God's church, that is, the followers who repent and strive to live by his commands. And that sets us apart. We are not a grand building. We're not a cathedral that required centuries to complete. I sometimes think when I, when I was growing up in New York City, there was certainly St. Patrick's Cathedral, which had been you know, an icon in the Catholic Church for many, many years. But then there's uh, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine up in the Upper West Side, which is still under construction. It's been under construction for over 125 years. And it is like a cathedral of the old. There are no seats or pews. It's just open, kind of like the old days. But it's fun to go see this building. But people get lost, as we know, in the structure of a building and feel like the reverence of their church is linked to that building and the quality of the granite and quality of the stained glass and the chandeliers. And we know that has nothing to do with our bond with God. And yet, that seems to be the focus for so many. We are a spiritual sandcastle of enormous strength and potential. And we find a similar command to us in 1 Corinthians 15 and in verse 58. Again, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. And we consider these words. Therefore, my beloved brethren... Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
when we are strong and doing the work, spreading the gospel, as we know the good news of God, we are doing as God planned and we are fulfilling our promise. We cannot do this as a solitary grain of sand. We would not be able to make much of a difference. But it is, it, it is, excuse me, it is in clinging together as his church with, with others of like minds and convictions that we form his church. And think about the Feast of Tabernacles when we're all together and it's that structure of the sandcastle that we see when we're there and we, in, we rejoice in it. We have that, that feeling of something uniquely special because we are those grains of sand clinging together to form God's church together. And it's something to celebrate. Building this castle is not without its hard, heartaches. We know that there are, are and will be divisions. God's wisdom in this regard is also clear. We are to avoid division. And let's turn, this is the final scripture for the sermonette, let's turn to Romans 16, and we're going to read together verse 17. And we'll consider the guidance that we see here. Romans 16 and verse 17. Now I urge you, brethren, note that those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. There's plenty of division and strife in the world that we have to live in. And it does not benefit the church in any way to take part in this. And it doesn't benefit we individual grains of sand to take part in any of that strife. We need to find ways to cling together and reach out and be one with the church that God is creating with us.